Hello, I'm Dr. Trudy Gallard, Associate Professor in the Nicole Wertheim College of Nursing and Health Science. I'd like to thank the Wertheim family for supporting the Wertheim Innova Innovation Opportunity Endowment Fund. These funds have helped to support my initial grants um, that focused on mild cognitive impairment in persons that had early um, memory loss. Hi, my name is Edgar Ramos Vieira. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Physical Therapy, and we received the first uh, Wertheim Innovation Opportunity Endowment Fund grant, and we were very happy for that opportunity. It allowed us to do some important work with older Hispanics uh, in the region and providing them with exercise and diet programs that otherwise would not be offered to this group. I am a certified diabetes education specialist and I got involved in that after being diagnosed with diabetes in college. I enjoy working with people that have diabetes to help them understand how to self-manage their disease. I also enjoy working in the community. I've done a number of community-based participatory research projects in which we focused on preventing diabetes. So that sparked my interest to really focus on prevention and how glucose levels and obesity were primary factors that, that involved developing type 2 diabetes in that population. Diet and exercise are the keys for successful aging and healthy aging. And you know what? We start aging the day we are born. So it's never early enough to start your healthy aging program through diet and exercise. And so I truly believe in that. And my work has been reflecting those interests and beliefs. So I work with the prevention of functional decline, frailty, falls, through exercise and diet programs uh, with older adults in different settings. I also work at the VA. The endowment funds allowed me to do the research with older Hispanics with diabetes, and now we are expanding that to other populations as well. About 34 million adults have diabetes. That's one in 10 adults. When we look at older adults, 25% or one in four has diabetes. That's particularly relevant for Florida, in which over 60% of the population here is over 65. So I've transferred some of the knowledge that I know about diabetes and health disparity, and it's helped to fund my current research, which is funded through the National Institute of Aging. It's looking at what are some of the barriers, as well as motivators and facilitators to participating in research for culturally diverse older adults. They look at what they believe aging or healthy aging research should be, but also look at ways in which they want to be engaged as far as being recruited for that research study. Our goal is to develop a statewide agency that have that has older adults that are engaged as well as educated about aging research. My research interests currently are the prevention of frailty, falls, functional decline, helping older people to live independently and, and as well as possible for as long as possible with uh, less health care use, less falls, less injuries, uh, and more independence in the community. My current grant, the Florida Registry for Aging Study, is specifically targeting older, culturally diverse adults, African Americans, people of Hispanic um, ancestry, as well as people from the Caribbean. So falls are the number one cause of injury and injury-related death in older people. Unfortunately, there is a misconception that falls are a normal part of aging when they are not. So health aging does not require somebody to fall as they get older or to become uh, mobility impaired. So I think the aging process needs to be considered as a continuum rather than starting at 65. And so we need to take that message throughout schools, throughout all the system, so that people start taking better care of themselves from an early age, so that we don't have the systemic issue we have that really makes it impossible for the healthcare system to deal with. 